everybody thank you for downloading this mini movie review this one is about 2016's the autopsy of jane doe can you believe i haven't seen this movie yet i don't know I ha i've heard lots of things about it usually good things people say it's a pretty good movie and i realized i'm like you know what I, I haven't seen it maybe i should do a review on it why not let's let's check it out so that's what i'm doing today the autopsy of jane doe according to wikipedia it is a like i said 2016 supernatural horror film it stars Emile Hirsch and Brian Cox. It's about some coroners who find, like, they discover some supernatural phenomena. It says here, while examining a body of an unidentified woman, that's why she's named Jane Doe. That's, you know, like everyone knows, that's usually when they can't identify a body. If it's male, I think it's usually John Doe. And if it's female, it's Jane Doe. This is Orvidal's first English language film. It was released at the International Film Festival September 9th, 2016. It was distributed by IFC Midnight, and it was released to the U.S. December 21st, 2016. Oh, right in time for Christmas. Hey, sitting down with the family to watch Autopsy of Jane Doe all around some eggnog and some gingerbread cookies. It runs 86 minutes, and it made $6 million at the box office and received positive reviews. So I don't want to get too much into the plot or anything like that. Like I said, I, I know some of it, and I've heard that it's good, and so... I'm going to go check it out. So I'm going to go check out 2016's The Autopsy of Jane Doe, and I'll be back to let you know what I think. So I watched The Autopsy of Jane Doe. Let's talk about it. Quite a movie. First of all, I'd forgotten just what a cutie Emile Hirsch is. I haven't seen him in a movie in a while. And I was like, oh, look at him. I really liked the combination of him and Brian Cox. In the movie, Brian Cox and Emile Hirsch play father and son. And I really like the relationship in this movie of them. We'll, we'll get into some of that. There's quite a bit I liked about this. There's only a, one or two little things I, I didn't really care for. But all in all, actually, I found this movie pretty creepy. I watched it during the day, and I still was like, this is creepy. I don't like some of the scenes and things. I was like, this is, I don't like it. In this movie, there's like this murder scene at this house, right? In the beginning, and the cops are there, and they find this body. Besides the murdered bodies of, you know, someone like shot someone and then blew their head off or whatever. Somehow the police uncovered a body in the basement, like in the ground of the basement. I'm guessing either it was already open like that, or they decided just to dig through everything just because of how intense everything was in the crime scene. They found this body of a woman early 20s. She's naked. She looks fine. Like, I mean, she doesn't, she doesn't look like she's been there that long. Her eyes are kind of gray and open. So her body gets taken to this morgue. And this morgue is ran by Brian Cox and Emile Hirsch, who are father and son. Austin is the son and Tommy is the dad. Austin. He has a girlfriend named Emma. He was supposed to have mentioned to his dad how he wanted to leave and get out of the business and go do some things. And he ends up postponing his date because with Emma, he was going to meet up with her later to go to a movie or a movie and get a drink or something. I don't know. So he was going to do that. But then this body came in and he knew his dad would be up late. So he wanted to stay behind for his dad. For that or so, they're just kind of like going through everything they do for police reports and just for regular deaths. It's, it's basically the dad's trying to explain to the son Here's how you determine cause of death. Here's how you determine all that. It's a little squeamy. I don't really like that kind of stuff of the whole popping the skull cap off someone's head or swabbing samples and draining the blood of the body. Just things like that. So it's just kind of like, eh. like I, I would not be a good mortician or embalmer or anything like that. First of all, any move that that body makes, I'm going to be like, oh, zombie, and just like shoot it in the head. I'm like, I'm, it's not going to be good. I can't, I can't. I have a lot of respect for people who do that, though. I think the only way I could do it would be is if I did it more for forensics of, like, trying to solve a crime. Because, like, even Austin, the son, was having a little bit of trouble kind of separating some of it. But the dad's like, we don't worry about why people do this to other people. 
you know, why they shoot people or whatever. It's more of we find out the cause of death and why in order to help with a case or to, like, in respect of the body kind of thing. Which that I could, I could understand. It still would be creepy. But, like, they kind of make it fun. They play some rock music in the background. You know, they're trying to, like, liven it up a little bit while they're working on these bodies. And there's also a cat. His name is Stanley. He's just like this tabby cat thing. He comes into play later. But the best part about Stanley is like, all of a sudden you hear these sounds in the air ducts. And then Stanley just comes bursting through one of the air ducts and he just like tosses a mouse on the floor like, fuck all y'all, I know how to hunt. Peace, I'm amazing. And just like leaves. And then they're like, oh look, Stanley caught another mouse. Like, I'm like, well, I guess that's good to have a funeral cat or whatever around. And like Emma scares them and they're cute. You know, they've been together a couple years and the cop, the sheriff, who they know because it's a small town. Or somewhat small. Um, They have a Jane Doe, the body I talked about earlier that was found in the ground. So they have her there and they're going through, they're taping it and going through everything. He's going to meet up, like I said, Austin's going to meet up later with Emma. That's the plan. Not until like 11. So they're just kind of playing the rock music again and figuring out what happened to this woman. This woman they don't know anything about. And so as they're performing the autopsy, they start finding all this weird stuff. Her blood's still flowing kind of well. It's hard to determine just how long she's been dead. A fly comes out of her nose live. I'm like, well, at least it was just a fly. I was a little worried at first. I was like, is that a spider? There's some peat under her nails that they were worried about because it's not native to that area. They're like, she probably came from up north based on this peat, unless it was something bought at a store. And just more and more weird things. A different kind of song comes up on the radio that's kind of creepy about Satan. Throughout some of this, a bad storm comes in. As they're going through all this, everything's getting worse. There's a bad storm outside. They found out that this Jane Doe, that her wrists and her ankle bones had been shattered. She doesn't look like she's traumatized or or messed up anything outside. It's all inside. There's even internal scar tissue as they're cutting her open. Her tongue had been cut. That part was kind of creepy because they left her mouth open for a really long time. And the thing about this movie that made it creepy, even though it really... I'm glad it really didn't do many jump scares. I mean, the one with the girlfriend, I, I knew she was there. I was like, it's probably a girlfriend. But they just had a lot of just lingering shots, and that's what made it kind of creepy, because you're like, is something going to happen? Even though it doesn't, you're like, that's still weird, you know? Um, They find out as they cut her open, too, that one of her molars is missing. Her lungs are blackened as if she was, like, severely burned. Just her lungs, nothing else. They find a paralyzing agent, a Jimson weed, inside of her stomach. They're not sure when she exactly died. Her eyes, it doesn't, they're not sure. And they're just, like, finding things out. And like I said, as this is happening, there's a storm. Um, The song that apparently, according to Wikipedia, the song that comes up on the radio is Open Up Your Heart and Let the Sun Shine In. But it's all about Satan. Don't let the title fool you. And then as it gets worse and worse, because they have a couple bodies in the mortuary. It's like a hole in the wall. You know, they they slide them in. Kind of like in Men in Black chambers or whatever. So they got like three or four bodies in those right now. This whole time, Jane Doe's laying on the slab. Okay, so... He starts hearing, at one point, Austin hears some noises up in the vent again. He goes to look. This part's kind of creepy. Then you see that somehow Stanley the cat has been injured mortally. Like, he's gonna, he's gonna die. He's been severely injured. He's still alive. He's kind of like, you know, just laying there. And this part was, it was a little creepy. (laughs) It took me off guard. Because you can tell, like, even though they work with death a lot, they had a lot in their life, too. You find out that Tommy's wife or Austin's mom had committed suicide. She was very depressed. Tommy had no idea. He blames himself. That's one reason why Austin hasn't left his dad. I think it's just, he just feels guilty about leaving him alone. So anyway, so they find the Stanley and he's dying. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, well, they have, they probably have some sort of thing they can give him or something. I mean, they're in a funeral home, mortuary thing. And so he's like holding him and Tommy, the dad is holding him and he's just like looking all sad. And then he just takes his neck and just breaks it right there in front of you. He's just like, and then they just threw him in the incinerator. I was like, well, I mean, they were sad, but it was just like, but they didn't really question it much. Like Austin tried to, he was like, dad, the cat was dead. And he's like, shush, like, they're not even going to discuss how this cat, I don't know if they thought a mouse just like stood up for everything, or maybe he tried to go after a rat, but he was pretty beat up. So I don't know. So then they continue with the autopsy. The cat's dead. Everything's moving on. Storm is raging. They find the, the missing tooth in her stomach, but it, there's a cloth wrap around it. And it's got, like, Roman numerals and a diagram. And so you're like, okay, well, now it's starting to get, like, a ritual thing. There's something going on here, right? And then they peel back her skin. It was, like, real freaky. They do, like, cut down her lungs and they, like, or her rib cage. And then they just, like, it's kind of gross. They, like, crack the ribs and stuff. And then they pull the skin back and it's just, like, this whole thing drawn in the inside of her skin. And you're like, okay, well, something is going on. And what I really liked about the father-son relationship is they're supportive. But as this, as things started getting weird and started getting more and more 
paranormal or where it would be impossible for other things to happen. They're both basically just like, what the fuck is happening? And they're like, I don't know. This is crazy, son. And like when it really hits the fan, they're like, let's get out of here. Like they're just like, this is not good. We both agree this is impossible. Okay. I liked how they kind of had each other's backs for all that. They're just like, this is bad. We're going. So when they find the inside of the skin, like all the marks and things on her, that's when the weather gets real bad. It's more of a, it's more from the body, I guess. But the storm's really bad out there. But all the lights in the lab explode, just pop, 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 pop. And so now it's dark. And then while they're running around, they realize that the other corpses are missing. Now they're like, let's get the fuck out of here. So they go to leave and then the elevator doesn't work. Then they try to leave out this like side door thing or because they're underground. Like they live in the house above it with the funeral home, I guess, or just their house. And then underneath is all the mortuary stuff. So then they try to go like the side door to like a storm shelter do- exit kind of thing. But their fallen tree is blocking it. So they can't get out that way either. They're like running around trying to be like, well, how are we going to get out? How are we going to get out? It's still dark. And all I have this like crappy flashlight. And then that's what gets real creepy because see, like they, they established this earlier. Tommy, the dad, is a bit of a traditionalist, he says. And so he puts a little bell on the end of the toe of this one man. I don't know if there was any on the other bodies, but there's this one man who killed himself with a shotgun. So he has a hole in his face. It's all the way gapped and you don't see it. There's a cloth over a bloody cloth on his face, but there's a little copper bell or something on his toe. And this is the part that it was creepy because it's like they're just sitting there and all of a sudden you hear like, ching, ching. And it's like this thing, this creature slowly moving there. And then there was a pretty good shot where like Austin was looking under the door of the room they were hiding in and then like the feet showed up. And then during that, Tommy got the crap beat out of him by something. And they're like, this is crazy. And then we got to get back to the autopsy room because now they're like, something definitely is paranormal or something happening with this woman. We need to get rid of this body or something. We got to, I don't know how else we're going to get out of here. So they go back in to look at Jane Doe. They're like, something's got to be up that we can figure out. And then when they get in there, the door locks and they can't get out. So then Austin, the son, takes an ax and he starts like chopping out the door And then that's when the man with the freaky face or whatever in the bell shows up in the opening. Creepy, creepy. They decide to set Jane Doe on fire. Austin's like, I can't take it anymore. He pours a bunch of chemicals on her, sets her on fire. It like lights the whole room up. It like, it burns the ceiling. It burns everything. Like they're trying to put it out with an extinguisher. And then it just dies down on her. It was kind of a cool effect. Like it didn't burn her at all. It just flamed around her and then it died down and then it was gone. And they were like, well, crap. So then the elevator turns back on, but the doors now, they won't close. And then like that the little ding dong or the little bell corpse is after them again. And you see his face, like the cloth fell off. They found like the bloody cloth. You just walk around. It's, it's all creepy. Austin takes the ax and he starts like hacking against this corpse, right? And then when they exit the elevator, they find out that Austin has killed Emma. And it was, it was pretty sad. Like he got her pretty good. Dad, even his dad was like crying. He was like, you know, I'm so sorry, son. We have to go. Because now the elevator can close and is working. He's like, we can't take her. And he's just so sad because it was, it was his love. You know, he's, like, he's only like in his early 20s. He'd been with her for a couple of years. They were very cute. So now they're definitely sure that Jane Doe is what's doing all this. All right. So they're like, we really got to figure out what's going on. I don't know why they decided to look under the microscope. That wouldn't have been my next guess. But they take a piece out of her brain. They're like, we haven't looked in there yet. Let's do it. And they find out that her brain cells are still active. She's still alive. Then they look at the cloth that they found on her stomach. And they were like, oh, look, if you fold it over, it says like Leviticus 2027. And I was like, oh, we're getting biblical now. So they look that up and it has something to do with condemning witches and the year 1693. And that's when I was like, well, crap, I know where they're going to go with this. It kind of was a bummer to me when I when I heard 1693 witches and the fact that she was from up north. I was like, well, damn, they're going to go Salem witch trials, aren't they? That's what they're going to do. And that's, of course, what they said next. They're like, oh, she must have been Salem witch trials. Tommy, the dad, was like, well, I mean, there really wasn't anything there. It was more just fake. What they figured out is they, the people of Salem took an innocent woman, transformed her into a witch somehow. By whatever ritual they were trying to do to get rid of her as a witch, they turned her into a witch. Uh, suspending her her own life. She's still a corpse, but she's been around. I was like, she looks great. She's been around since 1693. Look at her. She looks great. But she's still like just bringing whatever curse she has on her wherever her body goes. Safe to assume that those people in the house where they found her body, she had something to do with that of them killing themselves or killing each other. She's like this whole thing. She uh, wants revenge for what has happened to her, you know? And so the dad, Tommy, he's like, okay, well, maybe if I reason with her, he's like, my wife's not around. I feel like a piece of shit. I should have saw it. I love my son. What if you just take me? Take me as a sacrifice. Spare my son. The whole time, like, Jane Doe's just laying there. That's why I said it was creepy. It's just like, she's she's just there, like a dead body on the thing. 
And Tommy's like, just take me, you know, it's fine. And Austin doesn't know this is happening. He's just over there trying to get out. And then all of a sudden, it's kind of creepy, like his ankles, the dad's ankles and wrists shatter. You see it, it's like they, they break, just like the wound for Jane Doe. All the wounds happen to Tommy that she has. And as this is happening, her wounds are healing, maybe ending her curse. I don't know. But having to sacrifice, I don't know. All the other people she killed, I don't see what the difference makes. That is, she wouldn't have been over by now. So Tommy then is like, just like losing it. He's, his lungs are on fire, you know, his tongue is gone, you know, stuff like that. And he begs his son to kill him. So then Austin has to stab his dad in the chest with a knife. So then he's dead. He thinks he hears the sheriff outside. So he goes to run. It's a hallucination. He can't get out the tree. He's like, I'm trying to push the door open. He's like, there's a tree on it. And he's like, I, you're, you can get out. And he's like, no, I can push it. I can't get out. And then that's when that song starts up again and stuff. So he's like, crap. So he is on the ladder and then he sees the hallucination of his dad and he trips over the railing and falls to his death. I think he like breaks his neck or hits his head on the ground. So then the storm ends. And this part was kind of cool to me. The next morning you find out from the radio that apparently there was no storm. All that turmoil going on on the outside of the building, not that they showed it separately, but it was all just part of the thing. They were Because in the radio, they were like, oh, it's been four straight days of sunshine. And you're like, mm, last night it was a flood warning with like a hurricane or something. Like it was pretty bad. I mean, it wasn't a hurricane, but it was like really bad. And so the police come by the next morning and it looks like another crime scene, just like the house that they were at earlier. And they're like, gosh, it looks like Austin killed everybody, which in a way he did. He didn't mean to. They find the Jane Doe there in the same spot. She has no trauma on her. They take her to uh, Virginia Commonwealth University, and as they're taking her body over in like an ambulance thing to the university, I guess, to get more work done on her, figure out her stuff, on the radio in the ambulance, that song starts to play again. And then they kind of like zoom back to Jane Doe Lane there, and they show her feet, and then her big toe twitches, and then that's the end of the movie. According to Wikipedia, it seems that, of course, her curse was not completed. She's going to keep doing her same thing, which I get that. It's never as easy as you think. They tried it in the ring. It didn't work either. You know, he's like, first time you're like, I got it. We got it. It's going to be fine. And then no. And the next thing you know, there's nine movies. And you're like, oh my well, God, when is this going to end? So yeah, that was the end of the autopsy of Jane Doe. I liked it. The Salem thing kind of threw me. I still think it's cool that she was like this catalyst or like this, I'm trying to think of the word for it. Just like this, this own piece of like a ritual that didn't mean to happen necessarily, but was stuck in her own curse. Well, it's not her own, but it was stuck in a curse that was put upon her. And she's been doing this for a long time and will continue to do so. But the rest of it I really liked. It was creepy, like the dad and the son thing. It's all shot in just like one basic place. Everything comes to them. It's kind of nice. They're just like a, it's just a nice paranormal movie. Nothing too crazy, like not too many jump scares or anything like that. So yeah, I mean, I, I definitely recommend it. I liked it. I'm surprised I haven't seen it. So yeah, so if I was to rate this out of scalpels, let's go scalpels. For 2016... The Autopsy of Jane Doe, I would rate it, I want to say six and a half out of ten scalpels. So yeah, I recommend it. Six and a half scalpels out of ten. Thank you for listening to this mini movie review.